Hello everyone! Sorry it's been so long, but I'm finally back. I should have some more free time through the end of December and also the beginning of January, so you can expect some recent uploads through that time period. And I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of the video. Anyway, a few days ago, I noticed that I was getting a bunch of new comments on some of my old Power Rangers Theory videos, and as it turns out, the past week or so, uh, YouTube has really been pushing those videos, and I've gotten like a few thousand views on them in the past few days or so, and you know, that's really great, so I figured what better way to come back uh, than with a new Power Rangers theory. And today, we're talking about the Power Rangers franchise as a whole. And in particular, we're going to be talking about Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and Power Rangers Operation Overdrive. Yes, I know, people don't like Operation Overdrive, but... Uh, I do have a theory here which I think you guys are really gonna like, so stick around. I've always really liked the concept of the Corona Aurora, or the Crown of the Gods from Operation Overdrive, which really just acted as kind of a MacGuffin for the series, but the kind of mythological concept of it is really cool in my opinion. And I think I've discovered some connections the Corona Aurora has had with other parts of the Power Rangers mythos that have gone unexplained for years. But first, what is the Corona Aurora? Well, millennia ago, there was a war between these gods from different mythologies, this ginormous war that was appropriately enough called the War of the Gods. And during this time, on a planet on the other side of the universe, the crown of the gods, as well as five mythological artifacts, found their way falling from the heavens and onto this planet. When these five artifacts were assembled together with the crown of the gods, it created an incredibly powerful object called the Corona Aurora. This is the earliest known connection to the Morphin Grid to exist in the main Power Rangers universe, and for all we know could have been this universe's very first connection, or even the creation of the Morphin Grid as a whole. And I think it's the key to two different Power Rangers mysteries, the first being the Squadron Rangers. The Squadron Rangers were the very first team of hidden powers unlocked in Power Rangers Super Mega Force. While very little is known about them, something to note about Rangers in general is that they must have some kind of connection to the Morphin Grid. And a lot of times, these connections come through other mystical objects connected to the Morphin Grid, like the Power Coins, the Quasar Sabers, and the Energens, among others. So what was the connection that the Squadron Rangers had? Well, while we've seen the Corona Aurora in action before, we've never seen a team of rangers portrayed through its power. But stick with me here. What if the Squadron Rangers were the very first team of Power Rangers created through the power of the Corona Aurora? Remember, it created the Sentinel Knight as a way of protecting itself, as a guardian, because the Corona Aurora was so powerful, it was basically thief bait. What if these original Power Rangers were created by the Corona Aurora as a way to defend itself from thieves? It definitely wouldn't be the first time that some mystical objects connected to the Morphin Grid have created Rangers as a way of protecting it, with things like the Ninja Nexus Prism and the Inner Gems creating Rangers and also to an extent the Quasar Sabers as well, creating rangers to protect it from evil threats that wanted them and their power. Five jewels for five rangers. But one day this team failed. They were destroyed and the Sentinel Knight took their place. So, one mystery of the Power Rangers solved. But what about the other? Well, these rangers had to have zords, right? So what if these zords were the Thunder Zords? Think about it. If these rangers fell but the zords remained, it would make a lot of sense for Zordon to keep these zords around as backup in case of an emergency. Zordon did love his backups, especially repurposing old ranger technology for a new team. So when Lord Zed brainwashed the dino zords, Zordon took the thunder zords out of storage for them to use. What do you guys think of this theory? Does it make sense? Is it utter garbage? Does it matter at all about the archaic lore of a kid's show from the 90s? No, but it does to me, okay? Let me know what you guys think of this in the comments below. So I recently finished school for the semester and I have a bunch of big videos planned for the next few months. This week I still want to do a Spider-Man video to coincide with No Way Home and a big milestone was recently passed for the channel. We hit 1,000 subscribers, which is awesome and I'm incredibly proud of everything we've been able to accomplish together in this past year and change. 
Now the new Diary of a Wimpy Kid movie just came out, and if you're a longtime viewer of this channel, you'll know that I love Diary of a Wimpy Kid, and I even reviewed The Long Haul as my 500 subscriber special. So I thought it would only make sense to review this movie as a 1000 sub special, and also as sort of a joint Christmas special. And I also have plans for a ton of other videos, I want to make a video reviewing Doctor Who Flux soon. I also would like to do two short Christmas audiobooks uh, before Christmas actually comes, uh, which I really have to hurry up on because it's this week, <laughs> but I think I can get it done. I also have another non-Christmas audiobook that's going to come out either late this year or early next year. Uh, and. I also have a Doctor Who documentary too. That's right, I'm making a Doctor Who documentary. Uh, it's gonna be around two hours-ish in length, so feature length we're talking. It might be out by the end of the year, but we'll see. Anyway, that's it for this video. If you like the video, then make sure that you like the video, physically. Well, not physically, but digitally, but not metaphorically. Well. Ideally metaphorically too. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe for videos on the franchises you love and I'll see you next time. Bye.